What is going on YouTube? This is Acid Roots. So I'm going to review the fourth album by Dashboard Confessional. Basically, this album is called Dusk and Summer, and it came out in the summer of 2006. Now, this is kind of off the side. I didn't know about this project as much, but I would have to say I do remember the song Vindicated off the Spider-Man soundtrack, and I reviewed the Spider-Man 2 soundtrack back in, like, December. So I wanted to see what these guys were about. I've actually been wanting to review them for quite some time and finally got around to it. I know I've been wanting to review dashboard confessional since like november december as so i'm gonna get to this now and see what's up with them and get to some of these hits so this is the first album that they did after doing the hit off their spider-man soundtrack this has some good stuff on here it's a little bit of a different pitch this is kind of like a mild batch of punk and emo kind of songs but it's not heavily that this is kind of where if you have like an emo cat i feel like this album is if you take an emo cat and put him in like a blue collar suit and give him a vehicle and give him a bunch of after hours daytime after hours five o'clock six o'clock p.m type tunes that would be the concept of this album that's kind of the context behind it i mean it makes sense just because it's called dusk and summer but when you really look after i noticed with this album as i reviewed it that the concept the two themes about this album that are at least amongst the songs that i recommend would be you've got songs for bright and early morning and dusky kind of winding down evening there's not really songs for like mid pitch afternoon like lunch brunch kind of picnic kind of summer heat of the day one o'clock two o'clock p.m type stuff and there's not really songs for like pitch and night nightclub kind of eight o'clock past eight o'clock p.m type tunes that's definitely kind of the concepts very much either in like the bright and early morning when the dew is still on the grass and that type stuff or it's like in the evening when you're winding down and for the most part, the pitch of this album is just about going home and just kind of relaxing. That's kind of the concept. So it's not really like the ravenous kind of energy. I feel like they're kind of similar to Trapped. I mean, they're Trapped is more new metal and maybe a pitch of Papa Roach, something like that, but just without the new metal. They sent the same kind of vocal pitch almost. I feel like he's kind of similar to Jacoby Shaddix. And a little bit of that. I want to say that the cat from Trapped is Chris Brown. I want to say he has the same name as the Chris Brown singer. But yeah, I'm not. I, I want to say that's kind of the case. But I look after it like um, very similar to those two bands. And there's probably some other punk and emo kind of bands. But I barely kind of noticed the emo on this project. That's kind of the thing about it. Like he does have the emo kind of pitch in some of the choruses on here. But I didn't really notice an overabundance. This is very much just kind of. I mean, the summerness kind of about it, it's moody, and I feel like the it definitely is an emotive kind of album, but it's just a different batch compared to the typical, like, it's not a very gloomy album. I mean, it can kind of have some of that malaise about it, but it's just kind of the more typical, like, you're just kind of pissed off because work kind of sucked a little bit today kind of tone more so than the actual normal emo pitch of, like, you know, typical kind of emo sense of shit sucks and, you know, I'm pissed off and venting and that sort of stuff. Not many ruminating songs on here in that sort of typical tone, but it's just kind of the concept that you look after. It. It's just, it does have some pretty cresting kind of songs for, like, the early and kind of dusky kind of settings that works pretty well for that but it is a pretty solid album i would have to say i like the singles they're just a different kind of evaluation of what i was expecting and i do think the quality of it is on here but it's just kind of a left field and kind of curveball of a pitch as to how it kind of gets presented so that's this kind of thing well you'll see it as we talk about it so basically um there were three singles on here but the version of the album that i'm reviewing actually has four singles because vindicated is included on this so i figured rather than slash the score or slash the track list i'm just gonna talk about vindicated again because it's been a while it's been since december since i last listened to vindicated so i want to see how i thought of it now and i do like the song just as much so i'm going to talk about vindicated and then the three other singles which are don't wait rooftops and invitations and stolen so vindicated is from the spider-man soundtrack this is a uh, morning kind of commute gauze i would say it's a light breakfast a light breakfast commerce romp and it's a good makeshift bop this one just has a very light kind of licks and light guitar licks in the song is very pleasant and just kind of fond and just that sort of concept it's not really a ravenous kind of tune not really an ass shake or some of that type jive just a jaunt and that sort of stuff this really kind of has like light this kind of basic i mean i i know this album is called dusk dusk and summer but i look after i definitely can see this being like the pitch of morning when it's like 7 6 a.m something like that and the sun is just shining in your face some of those type moments 
is what I have to say. It's this good calmer to go and get some breakfast, brunch, some of those type things. It's a good kind of pep. I mean, it has a decent amount of pep about it that this is kind of in a makeshift sense. If you need like some morning commute, this is a good example one. It's pretty hooky too. This is probably one of the best songs off the Spider-Man soundtrack. It was just a good example one. It was kind of, it fit the energy of Spider-Man at the time from 2004, but it is a pretty good highlight. Just real nice one. Don't Wait is the actual official first single off this project, and this one's kind of some evening commerce. Don't Wait is the first single. This is an evening commerce song. It's kind of busy sounding, but it's some winding down malaise, I would definitely say, and it's a workaday kind of gem. This is another one that can kind of be played just amongst the car, kind of getting home, some of that type of stuff. Just the after hours just kind of kick back just for winding down and kind of having a lot more relaxed kind of vibes about it. I mean, I do think that this one is busy enough. Maybe you do have a little bit of things left to do for the day as far as that kind of goes, but it's just kind of a relatively, it's not, it doesn't give me the pitch of vibes as far as something getting ready to happen. Like I'm getting ready to get crunk in a few hours, go, you know, go have some shots at the bar, go find some ladies at the club. Some of that type of stuff it doesn't really have that particular tone. It's just kind of, I mean, I do feel like the concept of busyness, maybe it was just a busy kind of day or something like that kind of has like a little bit more it, it has a little bit more full and kind of compacted kind of sense of just like bustle about it but it's just kind of more in like a sun setting kind of sense i would say i definitely see that concept it's pretty hooky it's probably closest thing to vindicated on this album that's just on the standard album if you there are some versions of this album that don't have vindicated on there but this don't wait is close i mean this song didn't chart as good as vindicated but it's about the same pitch as that one it's the same sort of valve as that one particularly is so those are two similar ones but i think my favorite out of the three singles that are just on the normal edition is rooftops and invitations this is a real nice one really like the it reminds me of trap this is definitely one that reminds me of trap like songs like headstrong and some of those type singles there was a second single that was off of Trapped. I mean, there's a couple of singles off the Trapped album from 2002 that it reminds me of. It definitely reminds me of like some of those bleary kind of uh, post grunge and kind of like malaise kind of four o'clock p.m. type bubblers that kind of happen on like post grunge and new metal albums that just kind of had like those kind of woozy guitars and stuff. Definitely reminds me of that. Some late day kind of dredge this song reminds me of. And it's just kind of a woozy kind of fraternizing tune, I would definitely say. This is one that's a little bit different. I mean, compared to most of the songs I'm going to recommend on this album, this is actually one where it's not just strictly this the after hours malaise of just getting done with your day and that type of stuff or getting ready to have a big day something in that sense this is actually one where it has a little bit of socialization and more outing points in mind just a very light bop in that kind of sense for that sort of concept but i do look after it is a pretty nice one to kind of have just getting some relative dap as far as that kind of goes just within that i do like the concept of just like a good breezy kind of just a real kind of breezy kind of dredge of a vibe as far as that kind of goes I would also say Rooftops and Invitations is probably one of my favorite instrumentations on here. Best, one of the best productions in terms of like the instrumental that's on this project, I would definitely say in terms of what the band did. Def, it's not to say that this band didn't have some good ones. This is definitely one of the star-studded ones the most. Definitely like this one. Um, <clears throat> Stolen is the third single, and this is the most popular song off Spotify, and it's also the most popular song when it came to chart appeal and that sort of stuff. So this is kind of a dusky, moody haze of a song. It's a typical kind of 5 p.m. evening dredge of a song, I would definitely say. It's a hooky song, and it's a work-a-day kind of relaxer. This is one that kind of has a little bit more lazy and dredgy type feel compared to Rooftops and Invitations. They're both pretty evening dredge. Most all of the singles, all of the three singles on here are just like the album says, Dusk and Summer. But I look at the concept, this one's a lot more lazy and just kind of malaise about definitely kind of pink and orange skies, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock p.m. kind of dredge for just for winding down. It's kind of that sort of malaise about it. It's like the concept. Stolen's probably one of the moodier songs on here. It has a pretty nice hook, just kind of more kind of like typical kind of emo and punk kind of fashion in that sort of sense. It's kind of a smoky kind of one. It's like a more kind of moody version of Vindicated and Don't Wait, where I feel like both those songs were a little bit more peppy about it. But this is just kind of like that smoky kind of moodiness that's just kind of 
lost in like the after hours kind of six o'clock p.m hate as far as that kind of goes i do feel like some of this just kind of has like a tint of moodiness but it's just kind of the concept about it. it's just different in like the pitch of how it does it but i do think all of these singles all four of the singles i mentioned retain basically like their makeshift edge so these are all makeshift kind of blue collar just kind of typical kind of standard day type fare just car hours after hours that type of stuff as far as that kind of goes just buying you know mailing off bills that type of stuff getting some groceries some of those type fare just that typical sunset kind of malaise but um yeah it's just kind of the concept so when i looked after i was really expecting when i initially thought of what i thought of like uh dashboard confessional i thought that they were going to have more songs like vindicated i mean i think that they basically did but the concept i don't know if i was expecting them to be more like blink 182 or if i was expecting them to be more like good charlotte but they do kind of have like their own valve here as far as getting like some of these songs that are just kind of more like I do think that like the evening pitch works pretty well, but I kind of it makes me wonder about some of the songs that they could have done with like a more crunk kind of oriented type sound as far as that kind of goes, because a lot of these are just pretty composed. That's kind of the concept. You'll notice the composure about a lot of this. It just kind of keeps like things not necessarily at arm's length, but just kind of in like a, a relatively straightforward kind of sense. And I said that before, but just looking after just being able to say, I wonder about some of the other albums of this band to see if every album is kind of like this or just wondering some of the songs that they kind of have like in a different kind of sense because it feels like all four of these singles were kind of like attached to this like this typical kind of evening kind of after hours commerce just in a day commute kind of sense i just wonder this kind of happens to be a thing but it's good it's good stuff it's definitely good loud pack for just day commute as far as that kind of goes this round roundabout kind of day so i'm going to talk about the uh I'm going to talk about the seven songs I recommend. So there's seven songs I recommend on here. There's seven songs I recommend on here. And uh, there's 11 songs on the album. There's 13 songs on here, but two of them are live songs I'm not going to review because I think it would just slash from the score. But I look after it just being able to say that there are 11 songs if you count the Vindicated bonus song that was thrown on here. So out of those 11 songs, I wound up recommending seven. So I'm going to recommend those. So they would be Vindicated, Don't Wait, Rooftops and Invitations, Stolen, Reason to Believe, Dusk and Summer, the title track, and Slow Decay. Reason to Believe is kind of a peppy early burn gem. I would definitely say it's a punk kind of emo hook that it has on there, and it's just a nice summer jaunt. This is another one that's kind of similar to Vindicate. It's another kind of morning pep kind of one that's just good for starting your day. That upward kind of breakfast kick, wakey wakey type feel, you know, eggs and bacon type feel as far as that kind of goes. Just that sort of concept, just getting some good starts and pep to your day and just getting out and getting it. I, I like that concept. It's kind of like the rock version of a hustle song. This really has some real nice early burn towards that I definitely like. Dusk and Summer is a nice one just because this is kind of some acoustic haze. This is a good kind of tinge for it. I do like some of these acoustic songs. It's a crisp kind of late day romantic winding down to and I would definitely say so that's the concept about it. This one's kind of another moody one that's similar to Stolen. It's kind of has that same sort of pitch but I do like the kind of smoky kind of vocals that some of these kind of have. Slow Decay is kind of like that too but Dusk and Summer is just kind of a more crisp kind of song that I feel like just kind of has that nice haze about it that just works pretty well it's just kind of one it's pretty much one of the few like true acoustic songs on here but i do like the concept of just getting that it just works in like a late summer kind of feel just those kind of orange trees and that type of stuff orange sky some of that sort of concept just to get some of that so it's just a nice one but if you're absolutely looking for some songs that have some degree of like evening thrills about them and not just in a winding down sense, the lone song on here apart from Rooftops and Invitations that kind of does that is Slow Decay. This one has a nice evening bustle about it. It's kind of a mild thriller and it has some smoky vocals that work pretty well. This is another one where those vocals kind of work pretty well like Stolen and vindicated i definitely would say they just kind of have that correct kind of pitch about them so that's just a nice one i do like the concept of at least getting like a mild sense of like maybe you're gonna not just go home every single time in some of those type concepts you know go to a bar or something like that go to a dance club go to karaoke some of those type things get some drinks at, go to like a house party some gig like that some of those type concepts it's good to kind of get that sort of pitch is this it's a good thriller i definitely like the concept of that one and so to talk about the four songs I don't recommend, which some of these, 
Like I feel like some of these productions on here or instrumentations on here, like I feel like the instrumentation of Heaven here was a bad example of what to do. I mean, that one was trying to be like a plush one, but it just didn't quite pull it off quite as well. It was trying to have like a little bit more of like a more vivid and kind of more like emphatic kind of production that just didn't work quite as well. I feel like Dashboard Confessional just kind of struggled with doing mid-tempo and up-tempo kind of songs on here where those pitches, unless it's like in an acoustic or light guitar lick sense, like uh, like Vindicated or Dusk and Summer, it just didn't really come off that well as far as getting some of these more kind of emphatic kind of songs. That's kind of the concept with that. So Long, So Long and Currents were some more instrumentations that just didn't work that well. Those were some more kind of awkward ones as far as trying to get the correct pitch about them. They just didn't have a real attractive and kind of compelling, jumps off the page kind of approach to how some of those kind of worked. And then The Secrets in the Telling kind of had an awkward one too. I mean, just some of these were just kind of, I mean, I feel like the concept behind it is they kind of chose some formats of just kind of more kind of softer and more kind of soft rock kind of appeals that just didn't work. I like their concept of pop rock and it works on at least in the singles format but a lot of these I feel like I, I don't know why they didn't try something with a little bit more riff heaviness to, I don't know why they didn't try something with a little bit more riff heaviness they don't have any head banging type songs or mosh songs or stuff like that and I do like their emo sense but they're just very soft core rock and I just didn't realize that which is kind of the concept I think I don't know if it's so much that they can't do these more up tempo and riveting kind of songs or they just chose not to but for the most part the different variations of kind of soft core for the most part the different variations of soft core rock and down tempo type songs just don't work as well i mean i feel like they just had a, a this band kind of had like somewhat of a problem with establishing many strengths apart from just like the singles format of life i mean these light guitar songs are pretty good but it's just the variety behind them is not as large as like it probably needed to be and that's just kind of the concept but so me liking seven songs out of 11, which is still pretty good, despite the fact that I complained just like I did about that, I still feel like there's an overabundance of good songs on here. And I especially like the singles and Vindicated being on here definitely helps. So me liking seven out of 11, I'm going to go ahead and give this album like a 7.75 out of 10. I feel like that's pretty good. I mean, I liked over half the album, not by wholesomely much, but enough to say four good singles really kick ass. And I would also have to say on top of that that there are a couple of album cuts that actually work, but it, this is kind of the concept that this, some of these down-tempo formats need to be varietized better. So that's kind of thing. But the social score, I'm going to give like a 4 out of 10 just because the singles are good, but this is just not a real social knockout in terms of like thrillers for your buddies and that type of stuff. And even in the sense for the ladies, it only has like a couple of songs. I mean, it does have some songs for the ladies, but they're just so lazy and the affability behind them just doesn't have like a sheer spark. It's just very much like more relaxed kind of just real kind of down tempo relaxation r and r type stuff as far as that kind of goes so it's just very lambent in that sort of sense but i look after it just in terms of that so in terms of the future like dashboard confessional took a decent break i know between like 2009 and 2018 they were gone but they have dropped at least two albums in recent times so i want to get to some of the so i want to get to some more of this stuff and we'll see what happens with it but this is actually a pretty solid project and i do like the charm behind it, it was just a different it was just a different approach from what i was expecting